creating configurators with multiple language display options is a big advantage for any e-com. The same project can be used without having to make multiple copies per language. Let's begin by creating a floating UI in English. Add the floating UI to the scene and name it. Insert a text element and input the text. Open the font submenu and modify the font family and font color. Duplicate this text element, change the text, and increase the font size. Do the same thing one more time. Finally, duplicate the text element again, but input the price in the text field. Adjust the font weight and size. Next, select a floating UI and adjust its position. Disable the fill color and shadow effect. Additionally, increase its width in the layout submenu. If you want to increase the spacing in the body text, select it, and in the font submenu, increase the spacing. Let's create another floating UI in another language. Start by duplicating the existing one. This way, you'll retain all the styling you've already applied, but don't forget to rename it. Now, change the text in each part of the floating UI to a new language. Before moving on to interactions, we need to create a floating UI to control the displayed language. This UI will contain two buttons, one for each language. To do this, add a floating UI to your scene and give it a name. Disable the fill color and shadow effect. Then, add a button element, change the button text. Set the padding and corner radius values to zero and adjust its size. Remove the fill color and add a stroke. In the font submenu, change the font family, increase its size, and alter its color. Customize the on hover effect as well. First, change the hover color for the fill color. Then enable the hover color for the font and adjust its color. Duplicate this button to maintain the style and simply change the button text. Rename the buttons to prevent confusion when creating interactions. Since you want these two button elements in the same row, add a container and place the button elements inside it. Adjust the floating UI position and set the alignment of elements to the right within the container group. Next, we have to create an interaction that will switch between languages using variants. Group the floating UIs for each language and create variants. Open the interact mode and add a new interaction. Give it a name. Start by creating an interaction to switch to the English language. Add an on-click trigger by choosing the floating UI with buttons as the target, and selecting the English language button from the drop-down list. 
Add a variance action, select the variance group, and choose English. Duplicate the interaction to create a switch to the French version. Adjust the trigger and action settings. In the preview mode, test out the interactions. Make sure to set the English language as the default in the variance group, so it's displayed first. Coming up, we'll create a button that changes the material of an object, providing versions for both languages. In the design mode, add a new floating UI and name it. Disable the fill and shadow effect and insert a button element. Rename the button element, change the button text, adjust its size, and remove the corner radius. Disable the fill color and add a stroke effect. Use the same font settings as for other floating UI elements. Apply the same hover effect used for language changing buttons. Modify its position and tweak the offset settings. Duplicate this button to maintain the design and change the button text and name. The advantage of using variants with language groups is that you don't need to create additional interactions. Just move each language variant to a dedicated group. To create a material switcher interaction, we need to have objects with multiple materials. We can begin by duplicating the material, renaming it, and adjusting its color. Select the piping object and add a new material option. After that, select which material we want to use as the default state for both objects. Once we have the materials ready, we can create an interaction that will change the material with a press of a button. To do this, we can open the interact mode, create a new interaction, and rename it. In our case, we will add two triggers for each language button option. Next, we can add a materials action to the interaction and switch to selection. This option will allow us to create a selection of all objects that we want to change the material of. We can select the objects and then create a new selection. To cycle through materials, we can leave the material option as the next material. Open the preview mode and test the interaction. As a final detail, we will add a watermark logo in the top left corner. Add a floating UI and give it a name. Disable the fill color and shadow effect. Now, add an image element and upload the logo with a transparent background. Finally, we can open the preview mode and test out all the interactions to ensure they work properly. Now you have the true advantage of showcasing to a wide audience without having to create multiple embeds. If you want to go further, the visitor's language can be automatically detected through Vectory API.